Hello everyone and welcome back. Desert Island Movies, Desert Island Discs, it's Steelbook time. Yes, we're going to do a shelf of Steelbooks and whittle it down to that one film that I would take above all others. So let us get into it. Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. Welcome to a new Desert Island Discs. Yes, um, the every two weeks I give you an episode of this where I go through a shelf of my collection and choose that one film that I would pick above all others if I happen to be stranded on a desert island and I was fortuitous to know that was occurring. I had a set up to watch a film. You see where I'm going with it. Um, but this gives us an opportunity to look at my collection, see what I've got in a collection every two weeks and um, have a little bit of fun with it. And while I'm doing this, you can see what still books I've got. You can pick a film yourself. Pick a film yourself. What film out of all these is the one film that you would take in that situation? You only got one choice. Um, and I'm interested to see what you would pick and what you think of my pick and also along the way why not try and, and guess what my pick will be so let me just tilt the camera because we're doing this shelf just here we're going to do all these take a look at those steel books blu-rays, 4k's, whatever they may be so let us do it Alright, so let me clear a couple of collectibles off of the shelf. First of all, I have this Tony Stark Iron Man. Um, I didn't collect these when they came out, but the first issue was like $2.99. And um, I picked it up just for this Tony Stark figure. A bit dusty now, there's a web on it. Um, and then also I have a, I think it's called Bayushi or something. And it's a um, Elm Street inspired character um, you could get Jason ones as well that sort of a thing um, so we'll get that down so I'm left with what is on this shelf now now um, I do have a TV series here and it is the complete series of Relic Hunter starring Tia Carrera who well, we don't hear much of nowadays um, she was in Wayne's World and things like that and yeah this is a I believe this is from Germany um, in this country I believe we only got season one on DVD and um, season we had some odd releases but as a complete season only season one season two and three I used to have on DVD I imported them from Australia then the blu-rays came about and um, I got rid of I sold off them and, and, and got the blu-ray set but yeah so obviously that's not still book so we're going to begin now and work through these steel books. First of all, I'm going to do the ones that are laid flat along the top. Um, unfortunately, a lot of these aren't in protectors yet. But let's take a look at what we've got. Okay, so, I mean, the first film is potentially a contender. It could be someone's take. And it is, well, First Blood, it's not Rambo. It's called First Blood, isn't it? And this is, um, I've got a couple of sets of these. This one comes with a lovely book, lovely steel book. Um, I wasn't too happy with this when I first saw it. I saw an image of it, I thought, well, that ain't too nice. But when I actually got it, I got it cheap. Um, I thought, Do you know what? That's actually a really nice steel book. I like that a lot. So let me put that one out of the way. And we have Godzilla from 1998 from Roland Emmerich and Dean Devlin. And I have fun with this movie. I don't mind it at all. Um, it's not really Godzilla in a sense. Um, it's not a greatest film, but like I said, I have fun with it more than anything else. Giant monster movie, monster rampaging through the city. The, the main issue I have with this is that all the characters seem like caricatures of people rather than real people. And that's my only real um, gripe about that movie. Then we have um, The Fifth Element. 
Bruce Willis, Mila Jovovich, Gary Oldman. Um, I remember this coming out. I remember going to cinema to see it. I saw it on the same day as I saw Con Air. I went into Con Air first, me and a mate, and then we came out and saw this, and this seemed very lacklustre. Um, because Con Air is like, was like riding a roller coaster. It's like going to the, the theme park and getting on the best ride first, and then everything else pales in comparison. And that's the effect that Con Air had on us, because it was such a wild ride of a movie, that going in to see this afterwards, it was like, ugh. You know what I mean? It seemed a bit lacklustre. But over time, I grew to love the movie. Because it is a good movie. Then we have Barbie. Two still books. Yes, I was a bit indecisive on what still book I wanted. So I got both. Blu-ray one and a 4K one. Shoot me. It's not my only copy of Barbie, believe me. No, I've only got one more. I've only got one more. Only one more. It's up there somewhere. We'll come to them at some point. So, moving on. Um, let's have a look what we have here now. Okay, so we have the first Sonic the Hedgehog movie. It was fun. It was fun enough. Um, I thought the second one was half an hour over long. Had subplots that could have been removed. Then we have a Japanese version of the Steven Spielberg movie Jewel, which was originally a TV movie, then had some reshoots done and was released theatrically in other regions. I picked this up cheap in a CEX. I think it was in Woolwich. Comes with a poster. Um, it's a great film, a really good film, predecessor to Jaws, very much inspired Jaws. Um, you can see Jaws in this, just a truck, not a shark. Um, and recently we did get the 4K version, which obviously I did get. Then we have La La Land. This is a lovely steelbook. It really is. Look at that. It's a Best Buy exclusive when Best Buy used to do steelbooks. Remember that? Um, yeah, Ryan Gosling, Emma Stone. And I really dug this movie. I thought it was fantastic. The wife doesn't like it. And then we have... Godzilla vs. Kong. Another nice still book. Nice colourful. Godzilla there. Kong there. Um, sorry, other way around. Kong there. Godzilla there. Um, it's a nice still book. It does, it might look like these. They ain't dented. It's, it's imperfections and on the actual um, the protector. That's what you're seeing. Then we have Godzilla King of Monsters. This film got um, quite criticised, but I actually enjoyed it. At least we got to see some monster action in this one. I didn't mind this film at all. And then here we have the movie Plane in 4K. Or as I've got a copy called Mayday. This is the French version. Um, I liked that, you know, I don't know. I, I, it, I got it on Blu-ray. I didn't pick up the 4K, then I did import, well I think I forgot that I had it on order actually, and then it came and I thought, you know what, I will keep it. I got rid of the blue wire one, yes it needs to go into a protector. Um, I like the fact that it's got a different title than Plane. I didn't really like the title Plane. Okay, what do we have here? Here we have Cabin in the Woods. Um, I got this in a sale from Zavi, the 4K lenti um, lenticular, 4K still book. Um, nice still book as well. Yeah, with a nice slip. I like these ones with the slips that come with them. Then we have the Green Knight, and this was actually gifted to me by Lee Leels of the Bounty Bunch duo. Again, thank you, Lee, for that. Um, I did watch it. I did review it. Lovely still book. Um, bit of an odd film. Bit of a strange film. Um, I liked what I saw, but I think I'd get far more out of it on a second watch. It does play a lot into pagan ritualism and beliefs, um, most definitely. Like the Green Man and things like that in it. And here's a film I've got four or five copies of. Barbed Wire, still book. Yes, well it's actually a still tin edition, whatever you want to call them. Ones open up like that. Pamela Anderson, I believe it was 1996, this came out based upon the uh, Barb, Barb Wilde being a, a Dark Horse comic book, which I did read before 
the, the film was ever made. Um, I was there when um, Dark Horse started venturing into this more superhero genre with characters like this. There was Ghost, a character called Ghost, there was a character called X, among others. Um, yeah. And um, I think X, Barbed Wire and Ghost were the ones that were the primary ones that that um, had more comics than anyone else. But out of then, I think Ghost was the one that had more comics than even Barbed Wire. Barbed Wire didn't have many comics over the, over her run. Um, but yeah. But Pan Anderson was well suited to the role. And I don't mind the film. Um, yeah, it's just... It's, it's, I mean, I acknowledge it's a bad film. It's not a good film, but I can sit down and enjoy it. I've actually got about four copies of it. Different varying copies. And then we have Ready Player One with its Japanese still book. Um, yeah, with the Japanese writing on it. And I like this film. I didn't on the first viewing. Um, I was a bit... Um, touch and go with it. But then on the second viewing, I actually really, really enjoyed it. Um, it's it's a it's a fun movie. And talking of fun movies, Dwayne Johnson in the movie Rampage, and this is another Japanese star, art style still book, and a, a beautiful still book it is too. And yeah, it's it's a fun film. It's not a great film, but I had fun with it. Giant monsters running amok. And here's a film next up that made my top ten of the year, and it is Operation Fortune with uh, Jason Statham, directed by Guy Ritchie. And, yeah, this was a very enjoyable film. I really like this movie. So I had to import the still book for it. Okay. What else do we have here? Oh, look, I actually have a CD soundtrack. Whoops. And it's for Escape from L.A. John Carpenter's music score for Escape from L.A. Would you like me to do a CD collection sometime of, of mine? Um my movie soundtracks let me know in the comments down below so moving on still sealed pick this up for maybe two pound and that is born legacy the um jeremy renner one rachel weiss edward norton it's got a good cast um yeah but not the best of films and then we have and i forgot i had this actually um, Buck Rogers in the 25th century still book of what would be essentially the pilot episode of a film, film, TV film that came before the series, if, if that makes sense. Um, yeah, Buck Rogers, completely forgot about that. Lovely looking still book. Then we have Wedlock, Rutger Hauer, um, they're in a prison with, um, things around their necks, they're wedlocked to someone else, they don't know who their wedlock partner is, if they stray so far from one another, bang, the head blows up. Um, this is actually a TV movie, I believe, back in the day. And that's a German import. And then we have Nicolas Cage back on form with Pedro Pascal in The Unbearable Weight of Massive Talent, where Nicolas Cage plays himself, um, sends himself up, he, he, you know, he sort of plays Nicolas Cage in it, but an over-exaggerated version of Nicholas. Is it? Because he's an over-exaggerated quite an individual in real life. So, yeah. But it was a good film. It was a lot of fun. He had great chemistry with Pedro Pascal, the Mandalorian. Okay, so that's everything across the top. Okay? Um, that was laid down flat along the top. And now we're actually going to get into the shelf itself. So we've still got all these to go through. So, um, quite a number of still books there. But this is interesting. It gets you to have a look at the collection and what I have in it. Um, first up we have here, or first up, is the movie. Again, this is from Germany. Crime is King. Um, I believe this was called 3,000 Miles to Graceland. Kurt Russell and Kevin Costner playing Elvis impersonators. And it's a sort of um, robbery. You know, a, a heist movie. I've actually got 3,000 Miles to Graceland there at the bottom underneath Crime is King. Um... Yeah, this was a um, enjoyable film back in the day, and a film that we didn't get in this country on Blu-ray, um, I believe. So it's nice to Germany's always a great place to go for for, um, for, for for well for different things. 
And then we have 2012. Yes, the end of the world by the Mayan calendar. It didn't come to pass. We have a couple of postcards inside. And I was looking in because I knew we had inside, I did have this lenticular, which came off the front of a Blu-ray release of it. And um, I picked it up for like a pound in, or 50p in, in, in a CEX, just for that lenticular to put within. Um, and these postcards, I believe I picked up in the cinema at the time when this film came out, and they had them. Um, they just make a nice little addition to you know, John Cusack in that. Next up, 10,000 BC. Um, I've, I wondered if I had this. Actually, earlier today, you may have seen it, some time ago, when I started my clear out video, my Cullen collection Cullen video, which kind of followed on from this, because doing this has highlighted a lot of crap within the collection. So I started doing these Cullen videos. And in that first one, um, I picked out 10,000 BC and I put it on the back on the shelf because I actually said I'm not sure if I've got it on Steelbook or not, but I think I do. The answer's here, and that was a couple of hours ago that I actually filmed that video because um, today is actually the 15th of January. Yes, so there's that. Next up, oh, I picked this up, it was like a quid or two quid. A Good Day to Die Hard, the final film in the Die Hard franchise. Um, uh, I'll tell you what, it's got a fantastic trailer. This film has a really, really strong, good trailer. Go watch the trailer. You won't be missing out. Watch the trailer, not the film. The film is awful. I don't think I've ever sat through this film for a second time. Which is such a shame. You know, you've got Die Hard, which is easily in my top ten films of all time. Which I've never done a video of. Um, but then you've got something like that to end the franchise on um, such a shame next up I like this steel book it's really nice and it is for Austin Powers nice debossing on that as well like the vault it's just like a vault isn't it very nice good and the next one I actually have two steel books of <laughs> I didn't mind the film I didn't mind the film I should gift one to someone Angry Birds, the first Angry Birds movie. Fantastic. Um, yeah, I picked these up in Poundland. <laughs> Seriously, they had them there. I picked up two. I'm gonna leave one out. Then we have um, Amanda Seyfried and Clive Owen in a non. Um, which I got from Germany as well. German still book. And Alice in Wonderland Through the Looking Glass, which is the second Johnny Depp Alice in Wonderland film. Um, not very good. Not very good film at all. And that's it. And it seems to still be sealed. I don't know if it's been resealed. Then we have Ian Flux, um, Charlie Theron, based upon the anime cartoon series. I like these steel books. I like these style of steel books. There's a few of these Tomb Raiders had them, um, um, things like that. Moving on. Then we have Alien Covenant. I mean, as I'm sat here now, the news has just hit that um, Noah Hawley's Alien TV series will ignore Prometheus and Alien Covenant. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I don't think they're great films. I, I don't... The problem is, right, is why do we need to know the origin of the alien? Well, why can't it be shrouded in mystery? There's far more... Things are far more scarier when you don't know. When you, you're imagining that this creature is out there, these you don't know where they come from. Why would you? But then you connect their origins to humans and Earth, and that it just it makes the universe feel so small. And Alien Covenant, you know, when Prometheus came out, Prometheus was very much a 
it is an alien film, it's not an alien film, it is an alien film, it's not an alien film, it is an alien film. Again, that kind of thing kept happening with it in production. Um, Ridley Scott didn't want it to be connected to the alien universe at first, and the film would probably have been far better if it wasn't connected to aliens, and it was just about man trying to find the origins of mankind from, from up in stars and that sort of a thing. Um, and then Alien Covenant came along, and Alien Covenant was a reaction to the to Prometheus and the fact that Prometheus wasn't really an alien film. People wanted an alien film, so it went that route. So I'm, um, you know, I don't care that we didn't get a third one to finish the story off because that would have just been a reaction to this one. It's kind of like rather than going in with a narrative and saying we've got a plan, we've got a plan to tell this story. If we're reacting to how the last one was received and in turn you end up with crap and it's much like the Star Wars um, sequel trilogy as a reaction to everything rather than having a plan so I've got no qualms about that not being finished and that being stricken from canon at all they're not great films they're not great films when it comes to alien movies there's only real, really three good alien movies alien aliens and Alien 3, which is questionable at best, but at least it wrapped up the story arc for Ripley. And obviously this year we are meant to be getting a new Alien film as well, and what's good about that Alien film is that it's doing its own thing. It's setting it within that universe, different people encountering creatures. Fine, fine. And, and make it a one and done movie. Don't, you know, stop going in and thinking, I need to make one, two, three, four films. I need to make a franchise. Stop thinking like that. But this is how companies think now because it's about money. It is Art is out the window, money's in. And I get that they're businesses and that's what business, the point of business is, is to make money. But, you know, film used to be art and make money. Now film is sod the art, make money. And that, that, that yeah, it just annoys me. So next up we have... A still book for Alien vs Predator. The first Alien vs Predator film. Um, nice embossing on that. Um, it's, it's, a, it's an okay film. It's enjoyable, but, you know, it's, it's not great. And then we have Alien vs Predator Requiem. The second Alien vs Predator film. Um, and I will go and s to say that this film has probably the best or second best predator the wolf predator is fantastic the uncut version of this film which is I think about 15 minutes longer is far superior to that version funnily enough i actually watched alien vs predator one and two probably about two weeks ago and um you know they're not great films but i enjoyed them even alien vs predator requiem it drops the ball in characterization characters are crap this sort of a thing but there's some fantastic ideas in there and it's primarily all focused around the predator but seriously if you watch the theatrical cut and the director's cut or the extended cut the extended cut is far better it it shifts some of the story narrative at the beginning it makes more sense the explanation as to why you know if the predator because when you watch the the theatrical cut you're left with the question, hold on a minute, this Predator knows that there's an alien invasion on Earth or there's an infestation occurring on Earth. Why has only one Predator come to deal with it? The Predator's aware that there's an alien Predator hybrid. Why has only one Predator come to deal with it? In the director's cut, or the extended cut, not director's cut, the narrative is different. It's shifted and the Predator leaves Earth, leaves his planet to come to Earth after getting a distress call not knowing what he's going into all he knows is that there's a spaceship a predator spaceship that has crashed and he's got to deal with it it's not until he gets there on earth and he removes his mask and he puts on one of his dead colleagues masks from the ship that he can see the recording of what's gone on and the fact that there's an alien predator hybrid and that face huggers have escaped and it explains why there's only one predator that's gone there. and seriously a great predator and the, the character of that predator is a great predator next up we have here another version of alien vs predator requiem and it's this steel book here 
onion sauce is part of it. Nah. Now, to be honest, this isn't a Blu-ray case. This is a game case. That was a game still book. An Alien vs. Predator game. I just utilised it um, to put in a one then. Next up, we have Blade Runner. Final Cut. Um, I have other versions of Blade Runner. Um, I love the Blade Runner world more than what I love the movie. Um, I don't think this is the best of movies. I think it's quite boring, actually. Um, I know that's a hot take, shall we say. Controversial opinion. I think the world that it sets up is fabulous. And I think that the film is fabulous. It looks fabulous. It's... Um, characters are great there's tension but it's just so damn slow such a damn slow movie um, so much so that I actually prefer Blade Runner 2049 yes Mondo still book here um, great film I love this movie I think it's beautiful I really think it's a beautiful movie I love it um, I'm sure I've got, other, yeah, I've got another version of that somewhere, which will come to down the line, not today. Um, yeah, so just a reminder, don't forget, we're looking at our favourite film here. What film would we take above all others? Okay, because at the end of this, I will have to dispose of all these films bar one. That one film that I'd take with me to a desert island. So carrying on. We have... Backdraft. It's a good film. Um, great film. Ron Howard. What can I say about it? Hans Zimmer music. Kurt Russell. Anything with Kurt Russell is worth a watch. Um, good film. Then we have Basic Instinct. Sharon Stone, Michael Douglas, from Michael, uh, Paul Verhoeven, Paul Verhoeven movie. Nice debossing on this as well. Decent film, not the only version I've got. Um, and this is a film classic from my childhood. Um, Roger Corman, yes, Roger Corman, Battle Beyond the Stars. Um, got a great soundtrack to it as well. Um, done by James Horner, who would do Aliens, Titanic, Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. In fact, you can actually hear a lot of Star Trek in this. You can hear Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan in Titanic as well. Um, there's, uh, there's a lot of similarities. But that's just a film, a sort of um, nostalgia film for me. Next up, Battlestar Galactica, The Plan, which is... Yeah, uh, sort of TV movie um, from the series. I've done a, a few of them. Next up, one of my favourite Disney movies. No, actually, not this one. Um, this is the live-action version of one of my favourite Disney movies. And that is Beauty and the Beast. Um, I love Beauty and the Beast. I think it's a fantastic film. Um, the original, I think this is okay. Although when I watch it, not really too sold on the casting of um, Emma Watson in the role. And also I don't feel that they finished the effects of the beast properly. That it still needed some more rendering, a bit more work. Just to clean it up a bit. It looks a bit too computer animated for my liking. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, there's the animated one. And great still book on that. Embossing, debossing. Um very minimalistic steel book with the rose there but um, almost like a um, stained glass window kind of effect um, the hand holding the rose there and there uh, yeah it's a great film I remember seeing live um, on stage up in London years ago Christ um, I must be going back 27 years I remember seeing that um, it's very good it's very good next up this one's still sealed, but I've seen it, and it's Beyond Skyline, the third. Beyond Skyline is the third in the 
Yes, is the third film in the Skyline franchise. Um, this one played more like a TV movie, though, I think. It felt more like a TV pilot, trying to set stuff up. Um, I could have seen a TV series coming after that. Moving on. We have Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, Wild Stallions. Yeah. Um, good film. Good film. Although, my favourite Bill and Ted film is Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. Um, that's my favourite of the trilogy. Obviously, the newer Bill and Ted film I do have. It's not in steelbook form. I have it in the triple edition that came out that was quite hard to get for some time. Um, yeah, I had it in that so that I could get Bogus Journey again. Because that was the only way I'd get Bogus Journey in the UK. Even though I had the steelbook for Bogus Journey. So moving on. Bohemian Rhapsody. This was a good film. Um, you know, story of Freddie Mercury. It's still sealed. We have The Boy in the Stripy Pyjamas. Emotional film. Great film. Next up, Chappie. I don't know why I ain't got a J card for it, but I haven't. I think I got it cheap. Um, I didn't mind it. Not the best of his work. You know, District 9 is far better. Um, you actually got uh, another disc in there. Like that. Crime Spree Scene Deconstruction Disc. Okay, and so yeah, Chappie. Shame he never got to do his Alien 5. And here's a beautiful steel book, and I just bought it because it's a beautiful steel book. And it is for Cinderella, the live action Cinderella. Um, yeah, that's a magnificent looking steel book. Again, I like the minimalistic nature of the front, some embossing, just the silver, this glass slipper. Fantastic. Uh, if ever there's one, you can question why I've got it. It's divergent. Let's move on. Let's not talk about that one. Then we have um, 4K version of The Deer Hunter. Yes. Christopher Walken, Robert De Niro, John Savage. Um, it's a good film. Good film. Never got around to watching this actually. Project Pop Art Steelbook for The Dark Tower. That's picked up very, very cheap. Very cheap. Idris Elba, Matthew McConaughey. How could you go wrong with those two actors? I don't know, but they did. Then we have, with a sort of lenticular on it, and it is. Dolph Lundgren movie, Dark Angel, or I Come in Peace, as it was otherwise known in some territories. The one with the aliens, where he's chased the copper and the aliens come down to Earth, and um, I come in peace, you go in pieces. What a line. Um, yeah. Decent film. That's a throwaway film, um, but it's a, it's a fun movie. And then we have a lovely still book for... Ex Machina. That's a nice still book. I like that still book a lot. Remember, this isn't what's the best still book to take. It's the best film. So, moving on. Oh. Ash. Groovy. Um, Bruce Campbell. Evil Dead 2. Um, still book that... Lovely steel book, a lot of detailing on that, and inside it actually came with um, a number of art cards as well. And this is a 4K version. Um, that art card, art card, oh, it's upside down, but you get the gist. There's art cards in there, there's the J card in there as well. Um, yeah, I think we recently got this 
re-released in this country. This wasn't from this country, this version. Um, hence why I don't, I don't think we got the art cards in our one. But I'd already had the still book because I like the Evil Dead franchise. Um, then we have the Army of Darkness, and this is the um, American version with lovely art on that. Lovely, lovely. I really like that. I love Army of Darkness. I think it's a fantastic film. And then I've got this other still book for it there. Army of Darkness with the classic poster art on it. I'll just push it up a bit. Um, yeah, really nice. I remember having this poster on my wall. Still got a t-shirt with this image on it. Um, I, I just thought Bruce Campbell was great in those films. Next up, Edge of Tomorrow. Live, die, repeat, whatever you want to call it. A Tom Cruise movie. It's okay. It's okay. I mean, I think a lot of people like it a lot more than me. My main issue, my main gripe with it is I'm not a fan of um, um, Groundhog Day storytelling. Um, that rinse and repeat nature of that storytelling, I find it quite awkward to watch because it's um, so difficult for me to follow the narrative. I feel like I'm watching and it's not going anywhere and I want the narrative to progress and I have to watch the same thing but slightly different time and time again I find that repetitiveness really oh, mind mind grating anyway moving on from David Ayer now and it's Fury Bad Pit tank movie good movie as well David Ayer he won't stop without that bloody Suicide Squad cut will he because that's all fresh at the moment, again. And he's saying, oh, I want a, a sort of funeral showing of it and all this sort of thing. But if you get a funeral show, you know, and then I'll leave it, then I'll shut up about it if there's a funeral showing. No, if there's a funeral showing, what's going to happen is, is if it gets applauds and all this sort of a thing, then that'll just push him more to try and get it released. I mean, I'd like it to be released. I'd like to see it. I'd like to see, but, you know, he's just going on a bit, isn't he? Then we have a still version of Flash Gordon. Um, this is the 4K version. I actually got this and the Special Collector's set for some reason. Um, Flash Gordon's a great film. I love it. I really like Flash Gordon. Another film that I grew up on. And I know I showed you Fifth Element earlier, but there's another version of Fifth Element for you. With a different still book design. Quite nice, I prefer the other one. I like the colours on the other one more, the purples and pinks. But that's good. Then we have Kevin Costner, 4K version of Field of Dreams. Field of Dreams. Again, a great film. Um, the late Ray Liotta stars in this as well. What collection isn't complete without the movie? Grease. Yes, Grease. And I like these designs, these sort of locker. These school locker designs um, that they've done for some films. I think The Breakfast Club got one of these as well. I didn't get that one, but, you know, it's nice. This has got Grease 2 in it as well, just noticed. Still sealed. And you get some, I think you get some magnets or stickers. Stickers or magnets in there as well. Keeping with that aesthetic of those designs, we have Gross Point Blank with John Cusack, Mini Driver, Alan Arkin, Dan Aykroyd. Now Mini Driver, I remember Mini Driver when she used to be in a TV series over here in the UK, George Cole from Mind of Fame and Sweeney and that, he was in it. Um, George Cole was in, was George Cole in Sweeney? Alexa, was George Cole in the Sweeney? Yes. The Sweeney's cast members were John Thor, Dennis Waterman, John Thor. Garfield Morgan. I've got that one wrong. Okay, um, Alexa, stop. Okay, um, yeah, Minder. What's his name? Okay, so I've got the two mixed up in my head. George Cole from Minder fame. Um, he starred in a show with Mini Driver where he was an old 
dodgery old bloke with another dodgery old bloke and she was there looking after him or something much akin to that. I believe that she left after maybe the first season and someone else replaced her in it. That's because she stepped away to go to Hollywood. And um, I think Minnie Driver's quite an attractive woman. But yeah, you know, Jeremy Piven's in this, John Cusack, Dan Aykroyd, Minnie Driver, starring John Cusack. It's another one of those those still books that's, you know, like a locker. Um, school locker with embossing on it there and the, around it and it's a great film this is a solid solid film I, I really love this movie and then now to the last film on this shelf very last movie and it stars Gerard Butler Gerard Butler and Monica Bill, no Monica Baccarin, Baccarin or whatever her name is um, and it is the movie Greenland yeah, Greenland, the sort of disaster movie, but more focused on the character element when that meteorites are coming and crashing onto the earth. And um, I enjoyed the film. I enjoyed the film. I think it got a 4K release as well. I believe this is just the Blu-ray in there. Can't be certain. But yeah, a solid, solid movie. Um, and that wraps up all of the films that are on this shelf. But I do actually have a Clone Wars book in there as well. That's... Um, I should put it up on the Star Wars shelf. Got all like art things in there for the Clone Wars. And it's yeah, it must have come with a set. It must have come with a set because it's um that size. What set did that come with? I don't know. So there we go, there are our picks for that shelf. And there's a lot of good movies on that shelf, so I've got my work cut out for me. So now in the comments down below. Let me know what film you would take off of this shelf. Because, I mean, come on, I mean, looking at it, you've got Disney's, you know, Beauty and the Beast. You've got um, Backdraft. You've got Blade Runner. You've got Army of Darkness, Evil Dead 2. You know, you've got Grease. You know, they've got Flash Gordon. Christ, you know, there's some truly classic movies on this shelf some, some strong contenders so I've got a wit list down just pick the one the one film on this this shelf that I would take over all others so give me a minute and I'll, I'll, I'll be back with that decision. okay so I'm back I've put the films back across the top I've thought about it I've had a look through and I've got some runners up as well um, and picked my my number one um but i'm letting so many go oh, i would let it's only a bit of fun what does it matter at the end of the day so why am i so wrapped up about what film i actually pick so i don't know why because it ultimately what does it mean it means nothing at the end of the day so let's just get to it so runners up runners up for this one are army of darkness most definitely i love everything about this film um this is the film that introduced me to the Evil Dead franchise. Um, it was this was the first one I saw, and then went and watched two and one. Um, I read the comics from Dynamite. I've always read the comics from Dynamite. Um, Ash vs Evil Dead, I think, is you know a fantastic TV show. Much in in vain with the comics. Um, I'm not a big fan of the. I thought the first remake was fine. The second remake. Um, Evil Dead Rise, which is a remake of the first Evil Dead film and the Evil Dead remake, the 2013 one. Um, we can argue that it is a remake of those films. It's exactly the same, exactly the same beats. just changes up location, but everything is exactly the same in it. It doesn't offer up anything new whatsoever. So, it, it, Evil, I'm in darkness, you know, and um, I love Bruce Campbell. I, I read his, I've read his biographies. Not that they're real, they're kind of fictional biographies, in a sense. Um, he done If Chins Could Kill, I think it was called. Oh no, If Chins Could Kill? Confessions of a B-Movie Actor, it was a book. And then the second one was Make Love to Bruce Campbell Way, which was a fictional biographical story about him trying to get this romantic comedy made called Let's Make Love. Um, that's what the book was about and they were very easy reads I mean as in page turners I was just like because I could hear it through his voice and everything and Bruce Campbell's done such 
fantastic work. You know, Autolycus in 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 Xena and Hercules' Legendary Journeys, um, Briscoe County Junior. You know, the, the TV show only went for one year. I believe that came out in 1993, and um, it ran for about 26 episodes, and that was fantastic. His role in it was fantastic. People just weren't ready for that TV show, a western with a mix of sci-fi element to it. But boy, was it good. Um, and, and I love, and it, you know, a lot of it I thank to that film. That film's the, the sort of, not my introduction to Bruce Campbell, but that's the one where I thought, I like this guy. I like this guy a lot. Next up, as a runner-up, is Gross Point Blank. Yes. Um, again, this film, it just it sticks with me. Um... This was at the sort of John Q's revival where he'd stepped away from his rom-coms. And this one is a bit of a rom-con, obviously, with a bit of action thrown in. Um, but he'd come away, done Con Air and things like that, I believe, at the time. So there was a bit of a, a you know, a, a new notice, a new thing on, on John Cusack. And that's just, it's just a strong film. It's a, it's a strong film, and every time I watch it, it's got a great soundtrack, 80s soundtrack in it as well. Um, it's, it's a solid movie that I have great memories of. Um, was it before? Alexa, in what year did the movie Gross Point Blank come out? 1998. The film Gross Point Blank was released on the 8th of August, 1997. 1997, that was a year out. So it was the same year as Con Air. Con Air came out in 1997 as well. I know that because The Rock came out in 96. And um, Nick Cage had done The Rock, then he'd done Con Air, and it's the year after. So another contender for best film has got to be First Blood. Again, I watched this not too long ago, just before Christmas. Um, it's, it's, what can I say? It's, it's one of Sylvester Stallone's best movies. It truly is. It's, it's a fantastic film. Um, yeah, so my one pick. My one film here that I would pick above all others to take with me um, on this shelf easily, easily has to be Blade Runner 2049. Um, this film is like poetry on screen. Every shot, every detail. Um, this just got Blade Runner right and... It was, I was far more interested in this film. The film holds a lot more for me than what the first Blade Runner film does. I said the first Blade Runner film, it does, I do find it somewhat boring, but that film I can sit and I am just intrigued by every shot. Dennis Villeneuve, the director, if I'm pronouncing his name correctly, um, he's, you know, he, he's got an eye, he has an eye, and you know, Ryan Gosling, his character, his character arc in it, Harrison Ford returning as Deckard. Um, yeah, that's the one film that I would take, take with me, because I, I just sit down and thought, well, it's a long film, it's a long film, but as I'm sat there watching it, I am engrossed in every detail of that movie, I truly am. Um, it's a fantastic film and I love it. I love it every time I see it. I love it that much more. So there we go. That, that was my choice. So again, what was yours? Put it down in the comments below. Because yes, there was a lot of fantastic films on that shelf. A lot to choose from. Um, I enjoyed doing that. I enjoyed looking through those still books in the collection. Um, so what I'm going to do in two weeks time, I'm going to venture back over there. Uh, where I was from last week and I think I've got two more shelves over there to do wrapping up the A to Z's and then I have a horror shelf the week after uh, two weeks after that so in two weeks wrapping up the A to Z's jumping down two weeks after that will be the horror shelf or all, all horror titles um, that I have in the collection and I'll do the same with that and you know I've still got two still book shelves here to go through I've got um, a whole Marvel steelbook shelf. I've got Marvel films. I've got all comic book related 
films I haven't got to yet, and animated comic book films. I have all the special collector editions that run across the top to go through. Will I turn this series into TV and do the TV stuff as well? That remains to be seen. Um, and behind me here, um, I do have a, a load of collector's editions of, of stuff as well. Sitting there like Film Vault Range and Titans of Cult and you know, Film Arena and things like that sat in there. Um, so we'll get to them eventually as well. So anyway, so it just, you know, what's left to say? But thank you for watching. Thank you for participating. Please, like I said, hit the subscribe button, come and join the channel. But more importantly, let me know your pick of film down there in that comment section. We can talk movies. Thank you all, and I'll see you very soon. Take care and goodbye.